Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're going to look at what's been happening in the oil markets to see if we can find any long-term investment opportunities. And hopefully, we can use this information to improve our investment portfolio and ideally get us closer to our goal of achieving financial freedom. Okay, so let's jump right in. So the first, and I believe the most important thing, is for us to understand the basics of how the oil markets work. And I'll keep this super quick and easy. So we can break the oil industry into three main segments. We have upstream, midstream, and downstream. Upstream is where they get oil and gas out of the ground. Midstream is where they ship it and store it. And then downstream is where they refine oil and ultimately sell it to whoever the end user is. So upstream makes more money if oil prices are higher. Midstream, well, they generally get paid based on volume. So they probably care the least about the actual price of the commodities. They're re they really ultimately care about volume. So how much is the demand and how much is being supplied? And then downstream is generally looking to buy oil as low as possible and sell it uh, for, let's say, gas price when gas prices are as high as possible. So they make more money when the spread is larger. So that's the basics. And this is a chart of oil going back the past five years. And we can see that when COVID happened last year, well, the oil prices tanked, which makes a lot of sense because ultimately demand around the world really dried up. And as demand has come back, well, we can see prices recently have shot up. Now, it's not quite as simple as just demand. There are other factors to consider, but demand is certainly one of them. And I think our last takeaway from this, from an investor standpoint, is who ultimately benefits from higher oil prices? Well, the first and probably the most obvious answer is oil and gas exploration companies. Companies like Exxon, BP, and Chevron are all good examples of diversified companies that have large exploration businesses. And since exploration companies make a higher profit when oil prices are higher, well, these companies should benefit. And another reason that oil prices have gone up recently is OPEC recently came out and said that they were reducing production. So we can see that when we look at OPEC's production going back the past five years, well, we can see that this little dip right here, well, this is as OPEC has turned down how much they're going to be producing. So we end up with less supply, which is visible here, and increasing demand, which is happening as we know as COVID restrictions are being lifted. And we already saw what happened to the price of oil in reaction to all of this. Now, on top of OPEC, well, the United States actually produces a decent amount of oil as well. And we can see that this is a chart of U.S. oil production going back the past 20 years. This comes out of the U.S. Energy Department, I believe. And clearly, we can see that there was a decent drop as COVID hit the world. There was a decent drop in the amount of production happening. And that's expected to gradually come back. Now, I just want to bring out two quick points. First is that if you look this data up online, you can find this on the uh, EIA's website. And ultimately, uh, there's a couple different numbers that they report. Some of them, which show higher production levels than this, well, that includes things beyond oil. Uh, it includes uh, a lot of biofuels, things like that. So there's more than just this being produced. But I just want just the oil numbers. And second, when I'm doing my analysis, I try really hard to focus on the numbers and try not to get too emotionally involved with an investment positioning or uh, my reasoning behind an investment. I once heard Warren Buffett say that it doesn't matter what other people, wh whether or not other people agree with you. I think the quote went something like, you're right because your facts are right and your reasoning is right. That's the only thing that makes you right. And if your facts and reasoning are right, you don't have to worry about anybody else. And I bring this up because I try to remember this whenever I'm researching a a topic or a company that is, you know, highly politicized. And I'm not a big fan of politics personally, but I get that politics play a big role in many industries. And I doubt that there's many other industries out there that are more driven by politics than the energy industry. But I've seen a few investor comments talking about now that Democrats are in the White House, well, oil production is going to plummet. And these comments went on to say that because that's going to happen, well, therefore, anything around oil investments are a bad thing. And I frankly, I think this is a very silly way of looking at it. Sure, Democrats tend to be more against big oil than, let's say, Republicans are. But even that is a very tricky and wide casting comment to make. Just look at the past 20 years as an example. These early years here, well, there was a Republican in the White House. Then a Democrat took over. And then, once again, a Republican took back over. Point being, the facts show that production can go up 
no matter who is in office. There is far more than just politics. There is many demand and supply factors that influence what is happening from a production standpoint. So I just want to warn us against making any blanket statements like that without first looking through the facts and reasoning the whole thing up. Okay, now with that being said, let's look at the average price of gasoline. So this is data put out by the American Automobile Association. And we can see the gas prices at the pump have been going up fairly quickly in 2021 and even at the tail end of 2020. So in theory, that could be a good investment opportunity. But to really see if there's an opportunity in higher gas prices, we want to look at something known as the crack spread. So the crack spread measures the difference or the spread between how much a company pays for oil and how much they pay for the products that oil produces. Now, there are all different types of crack spreads out there. I'm using the NYMEX WTI Cushing 321 crack spread. NYMEX is the exchange that this metric trades on. WTI is, this is talking about oil coming out of West Texas. Cushing is the location that we're measuring these particular prices. Prices are different all over the world. This is measuring it out of Cushing, Oklahoma, which is actually a crucial spot in the oil world since many pipelines all converge right in Cushing, Oklahoma. So there's a ton of oil activity there. And then the 321 looks at how many barrels are being converted into end product. For a 321, it's actually three barrels of oil are being processed into two barrels of gas gasoline and one barrel of distillate fuel. That's what that 321 means. An example of distillate fuel would be something like diesel fuel. Now, when we look at the chart itself, well, we can see that, yes, there was, in fact, a jump in the crack spread, which implies higher profit margin, potentially higher profit margins for downstream companies. But we may also notice that this jump was not quite as dramatic as the jump we saw in oil prices, which perhaps tells us that oil jumped higher, jumped at a faster rate than gasoline prices did. Since, in this case, well, oil prices are the cost to downstream companies, while gasoline is what they're selling it for. So the crack spread is ultimately giving an idea of how big the profit margins can be. Okay, so this brings us to some tentative investing ideas. So I think that there could be some money made in the upstream companies. Oil prices are moving higher, so there could be some profit potential for us there. Midstream companies tend to be one of the more stable investment opportunities out of all three oil segments, because what they do is they transport the oil and they care less about the price. They really care about the volume being transported. Plus, many of them are structured as master limited partnerships, or MLPs for short. And a lot of those companies pay out very big dividends since they get some tax advantages for paying higher dividends. So if we like dividends, that could be an interesting play. And then finally, we have downstream. Now, I think downstream I'm slightly less optimistic about because the crack spread hasn't moved quite as high as some of the other things, but of course that could change. So I think it could make sense to focus on some of the large companies, companies like Chevron or Exxon, because that gives us a fairly well diversified portfolio as far as exposure to these three segments. Now, I'm sure we're all aware that the real question is not necessarily where gas and oil prices are today, but where they're going. And I think that there's a good chance that oil prices could at least stay the same, perhaps move higher, since OPEC has kept production slightly lower than they were before, which helps restrict supply. Plus, COVID restrictions around the world should gradually uh, loosen, let's say, and more, th more people should go out and, in theory, buy gasoline and have a bigger demand for oil. So if we want a diversified company, Chevron Exxon could make sense. If we want high dividends, or, yeah, high dividends or high yield companies, they could go after MLPs. They might make a lot of sense as well. Another opportunity, another option is to go with an ETF. There are ETFs. Spiders have ETFs for each of these three main segments. So that could be a logical place to go if we think that one segment has a better opportunity than others. I might lean towards midstream or, you know, I would probably look for something diversifying amongst all the sectors. So for me, I think it, if we want to be invested in oil at this point, I think it makes sense to stay with a well-diversified ETF. And if we believe that oil prices will keep going higher, maybe we could take a shot with a more speculative position and look at something like the United States Oil Fund. Their ticker symbol is USO. That's an ETF that ultimately tries to 
you know, they invest in oil. They invest in oil futures contracts. So if oil prices keep going up, well, there could be good profits to make to be made there. Now, they're also actually one of the few ETFs that I did an analysis video on. I've done analysis videos on many companies, but this is an ETF analysis video that I did. So if you're curious to learn more about how this ETF works and how some of the nuances of this ETF, perhaps that's a good next video for you to watch. I got a link right here. I got a link in the description below. And thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.